will you join me in welcoming our speaker, Stefan Virtel, and his talk about the Python interpreter? Uh, thank you. I think I'm not in the good conference because, it, in fact, it's just exploring the Ruby interpreter. No, sorry. <laughs> just kidding. So, okay. Uh, my name is just Stefan Wirtel. Uh, in French, Stefan Wirtel. Uh, I come from Belgium, uh, where we have some beers and the Fosdam and the Python Fosdam. Okay. Uh, of course, I'm a Python lover uh, since uh, the first of the decade. No, okay, it's not really important. I'm not a C Python core dev. Just that. It's just an introduction. Uh, and yes, uh, just a small contributor to CPython and Unicorn. If you know the project Unicorn, and of course CPython. Uh, I'm a nominated a member of the PSF, Python Software Foundation. Of course, we can become uh, a member of the PSF. And since two or three years, I'm a member of the Ro Python Society, the organizer of the Ro Python event. Welcome. So, uh, just a reminder, I'm just an introduction, and I'm not a core dev, okay? Just a contributor. If you want to contribute, just create some patch and send them. So, about the schedule. The schedule will be really simple. We have how to start with CPython, not a, how, can I cry, uh, how can I write a print statement or just that, okay? Just okay, can we read the source code and try to understand it. Uh, we will have a small question to still uh, how to create, what's the result of Python of this expression, two more two, and a small summary, okay? So, how can we start? That's a good question, sorry. Uh, maybe with the developer's guide. In fact, when you want to start to develop with CPython, that was my case uh, at PyCon in Montreal. Uh, sometimes we can find some sprints. There, there is a sprint on CPython, and that was my case where I came with my bag and my laptop, and I uh, just asked to some developers, hello, I would like to help you with CPython. First thing, so can you read the developer's guide, the dev guide in short? Yeah, of course, I can. Uh, in this document, it's a just a small document, sorry, uh, here, please. Hopla. No, it's not the direct, it's just, hopla, it's just the developer's guide. If you want to start to develop to hack on CPython, you can read this, uh, this documentation. You will read how to make uh, a clone of the repository, how to become a core dev, how to, for example, you want to add a new keyword in the syntax uh, of Python. There is a small checklist, in fact, uh, a checklist with uh, 20 points to, to verify, okay? Just that. Uh, yeah, and how to become a, uh, sorry. The dev guide is really interesting because we have uh, some explanation about this, the tracker, the build bus, the Python developer pack, the peps, and you can read everything. So that's really interesting because you have the getting started, how to compile Python, uh, how can you help, for example, with the documentation, with the source code, or with everything. Uh, how to write a test and just how to run the test on several platforms. Okay, so come back to the doc, my presentation. So the dev guide will explain the quick start, the, gra the grammar, how to change the syntax, and just the design of CPython compiler. Yes, we have the source code in Python. There will be the lexer, the parser, the peep holder, and just the PyCode at the end with the virtual machine. So you can find the documentation at this location. When you start, okay, I'm sorry, I have a question. Oh, can I, ah, not for you, huh? but for me, uh, when you go in a sprint, uh, I have an issue. I have this issue, how can I fix it? Oh, I don't have time, but you can send a message to this my, uh, mailing list, Python, Python Mentors. Python Mentors is just a big mailing list, a program, where you can send um, a request, and you will get some response from Guido Van Rossum, Brett Cannon, David Hermare, Victor Steiner, myself, 
and of course other developers. That's really interesting because you can discuss about the solution for your issues. Okay? Uh, in my case, I wanted to modify the interpreter, just the lexer, uh, because I found an, an issue, an error. And when I send my message, my, my mail, I receive a response from Guido where he told me, uh, sorry, but in fact in Python, there is no one parser, but two parsers for the, the, the syntax. Okay. So, uh, of course, you want to start, where to start? You have the mailing list. Um, with the mailing list, we have the anons, the bugs anons. In fact, when you create new bugs in the bug tracker of Python, you have a mailing list for that. You can follow it just re to receive the, so, some notifications. When you want to discuss about a bug, you have one mailing list. This mailing list is just mapped with the bug tracker uh, with Roundup. If you need some help, you have the mentorship mailing list. If you want to discuss about one big point in the core of Python, you have the mailing list, the Python dev. If you want to create, if you, uh, if you have an, uh, a, an awesome ID, for example, the Fat Python project, uh, to try to improve the, the performance of Python, uh, you can try to submit something on the mailing list, the Python IDs mailing list, and you will see if you have a good result, a good feedback or not. In this case, that was not. Uh, and yes, e today we discuss about the performance with async IO, with uh, UV loop and the rest. If you are interested by the speed of Python, you can discuss on this mailing list. That's very really useful. It's, it's uh, a mailing list where we discuss about the internal parts of Python, okay? Not about how to use the best, what's the best practice for the performance. Okay, uh, so how to contribute? Firstly, but that's really simple. You go on the bugs, bugs.python.org website and you create a user account. With this user account, you have to sign a contributor agreement with the PSF because the source code is the, um, the owner of the, the source code is the PSF. Okay? Uh, looking for one stuff. Yes. Uh, yeah, sorry, excuse me. So the step two is just how can I prove CPython? Firstly, you have the documentation. Please, we have a good documentation, but we have a missing, uh, some missing tutorials. For example, AsyncIO. We have the documentation about AsyncIO, but we, ha we don't have a tutorial about that. How can we start with AsyncIO? Can we use it and the rest? We have a reference in the documentation. If you want to contribute, that's the right, the right place. Uh, yes, of course, you can create some issues, fill them, and uh, if you find a bug, of course, or if you want a feature, a new feature. Uh, I'm going to, uh, to show a feature, though, uh, a small feature. Uh, we need some reviewers. Yeah, uh, if you look the source code of Python, Per day, we, have, we only have 10 commits per day. It's not really uh, big. If you want to contribute, just review the patches and we will be happy, okay? You will receive a good message, thank you, because that's really interesting and important for us. Sometimes you can create a patch, propose it. Just uh, create an issue, propose a patch, uh, rest. Ah uh, yes, and sometimes, that's really interesting because you have created your patch and you can wait for six months before a review because we have some two or three reviewers. If you want to contribute, it's a, it's a good place at a good time. Yes, of course, the problem, the process is really slow. Um, I have some issues, open issues, and they are open since um, two years. Mm? Sometimes that's really difficult for, for me because, but why my patch is not merged in the source code? We don't have time, sorry. Uh, yeah, the last point, just uh, we try to migrate Python to GitHub. Bye-bye, Mercurial. Yes, yes, 
Yes, you can create account. You can use your icon on GitHub and just create a pull request. I prefer that. Us usually, when you try to create a patch, firstly, you download the, the, the branch. You create your patch and you create a diff. This diff file, you will send it, will, you will upload it to the, the bug tracker. If there is a new version, your uh, patch is just outdated. So, okay, and now what can we do? Just firstly, when you start, uh, maybe we can try to find the directories of Python and try to understand them. In fact, how can we find the information? Firstly, with the documentation, the doc directory, just the manual of Python, where you f will find the syntax, the, the reference of the language, the reference of the library, the standard library. You can buy some books. Uh, David Beasley or Doug Elman have uh, some good books. That's a good references. Uh, the, the grammar directory is just the grammar, where uh, the grammar is defined. It's just a text file, just that. If you want to modify it, you have the grammar uh, directory and the parser directory, because if you had a new keyword, you have to lex them and just improve the, gra the, the parser and the ST, and the bytecode, of course. Uh, you have the lib directory just for the Python library, uh, Python models. For example, you have the tel telnet lib, you can mod if you want to modify it, it's just in this uh, directory. For the models directory, that's the C, C part of Python. For the object, for example, you want to, uh, to learn the, the implementation of the dictionary of Python, you can go in the object directory, okay? Hello, uh, then, we have uh, the programs directory. It's just the Python executable, yeah, because Python is a small executable. And the Py Python is a library. You can load the library for, if you want to embed the source, uh, Python in your software. Okay, about the documentation, we have the reference for the language, the reference for the library, the, la the reference for the C API. If you want to learn, you can read the documentation. And sincerely, we, we want a small tutorial. Uh, who is an expert of AsyncIO? Okay, you have a new fix for you. So, just, oh, yes, another guy, yeah? No? Oh, shit. No, it's really boring because uh, you have Victor Stinner and uh, Andrew, they are discussing on the, on the table uh, uh, near the, the lunch, and they try to improve the documentation about AsyncIO. They, they want to create a, a tutorial. So, I have one question, just one. Really, just one. What's the result of this expression? Okay, four. It's not very difficult. But for me, I don't want to know this value. I prefer to see the command line, the lexer, the parser, the interpreter, the compiler, everything about that. And when you start to modify Python, okay, you have the Python part, but I'm just interested by the C, the C part. When you execute the command line, you have that. Firstly, we have the command line, of course. The command line is just executed by the python.c file. The python.c file will load the Python library. You can try on Windows OS X or just on Linux, you will get the same result, okay? If you want to embed Python uh, with your software because you have developed a software in C++, just use this, the, the Python library. Okay, so lib, lib Python, uh, one so lib, or I don't know. Uh, when you will execute the source code, automatically we will initialize CPython and we try to load some models and read the, and read the source code, convert it to uh, an AST and execute it, okay? So the lexer, the lexer is just defined, if you are interested, of course, is the topic of this talk. Uh, you have the tokenizer.c. This to the tokenizer will take a string, in Python string, will convert in some keyword, uh, some expression in, uh, to uh, in token. You have the parse talk and the tokenize. That's good. 
for example, we take x equal to mod plus two, we have this, exp this result. Uh, where is my uh, mouse? We have six token. Each token has one type and value, okay? You can learn with that. If you want to use it for a disassemble, of, uh, if you want to dis disassemble uh, Python. Uh, yeah, you know that with Python 3.5, we have a new keyword, two new keyword, async and await. In fact, it's not a real keyword in Python. It's just in function of the definition of your code, a keyword or not. The parser is really smart about that. If we make an example, uh, async equal true, in this case, it's just uh, a name, not a keyword. If we try, uh, I don't have my echo, no, sorry. Um, yes, if we check, it's not in the, key, the, the keyword list of Python, uh, it's, not, it's just uh, yeah, a name. So, uh, know about the parser. You have your tokens, you can convert them in a EST. EST is just that, okay? For this expression, x equal to more two, we have a model with a body. The, in the body, we have an equal, and the equal is just name with an ID, equal x. And we have the had, where we ha will add the two numbers. For the compiler, uh, you have the ST. I would like to convert it to a by the bytecode. Just uh, execute this source code. Compile, you have your tree, the, the ST and you can convert it to the bytecode. With the, this uh, model, we can see the, the bytecode. If you want more information, you can read this documentation, this pep. Yeah, I know. Okay, for the bytecode, in the, the C part, we have a definition of the, uh, of pi, yeah, definition. Uh, the bytecode is just uh, a compact numeric code, one byte. Not a word, just one byte. Uh, the bytecode is just portable, and when one uh, bytecode is just followed by, by one parameter or by many parameters. Uh, yes, it's just used by the virtual machine, in this case, a software interpreter. For the bytecode, uh, when we have this empty file and try to convert it, we will receive a bytecode. The bytecode is just nothing load const zero, and uh, return the value, just an empty. When you create a new file, an empty file, the interpreter will execute it. If you try with this function and try to convert it, uh, you will get the result of the bytecode, okay? You have the bytecode. After that, we try to optimize the bytecode with the pip holder. For example, we have x equal two more two. The system will convert it to four, okay? He, he doesn't, he don't want to try uh, to add two more two. Example, another example. If one print hello, we have this byte code. If zero, there's nothing. We remove the dead code, okay? Via the, the pip holder. So, no, we have the pipeholder, we have the bytecode, how to interpret it. The interpreter is just a virtual stack machine. Um, this virtual machine will execute the bytecode. It's just a stack. We push an element, we pop it. We execute something, we pop it, okay? So, a small example where we, we try to create a small interpreter. Maybe there is a, a bug, I didn't test it. But an interpreter is just, we have a stack, a pointer on the instruction, the current instruction, and we run, we read each instruction. In this case, I just create a small bytecode. Uh, example, firstly, I try to push five, push again three, and push them. And the rest is just add, add, and pop. When I'm going to read the source code, uh, the bytecode, by, via the interpreter, I, have, I push five in the stack, push three, push 10, just add, I will pop the two last elements and I get a, a 13. 
After that, I will add another value, take the second, the, the, two, the two value on the stack, and, and get 18. It's just that. I can get the pop. I will empty the, I will uh, erase the, the, the stack. So, do you remember this function? Just that. We have the, the bytecode, okay? And, yeah, we have the bytecode, just that, huh? And now we have the C part of the byte uh, executed by the virtual machine when you execute the bytecode. For example, we, we, had, we have the load fast here in the example. The load fast will execute this code. Just, okay, I'm going to push something in the, in the stack of the memory of Python, in the stack frame, in the frame. For the lowest count, I try to get the value from the constants in the global, so it's just in the locals, and try to use them and just push in the stack, okay? When I try to use the binary head, the hop code, the system will check if it's a string. If not a string, okay, maybe a number. If it's a string, we will create a concatenation. And if it's a uh, number, we just add one, two, more, uh, one and one. And after that, just push the, the result on the stack. For the store fast, we have the, the source code of Python. Okay, so uh, for the rest, and just for the fun, if you read the source code of CPython, no, I think he's sleeping. Yeah, he's sleeping. Uh, the, in the source code of Python, we have the evolution. That's that, what time? Four minutes, okay. Uh, we have the, this function, x. The system will try to read the source code and ev ev evaluate the, the source code. The main function is just this function, pi eval eval frame, a function with 2,000 lines of code, just one function, okay? And there is a hack in, uh, in the function because sometimes uh, some compiler, C compiler does not support the, uh, a feature and we create the default. Well, in the default, there is another swi uh, switch uh, for the next uh, bytecode, okay? So, I have a summary. The summary is just, we need to improve the documentation, review some patch, and try to improve the issues if you have a uh, problem with Python, and just that. That's really fun. <laughs> no, certainly, yeah. I like, because uh, when you put, it's on my case, because I'm not a core developer, but I try to add, I am a contributor to CPython. Yes, good. Good for you, good. <laughs> now, uh, a small example, I wanted to show you uh, about an issue, uh, uh, not an issue, a small functionality for me. Come on, where are you? Um, no, bye-bye. Okay, come on. I just modify uh, CPython, just with a small patch. And sometimes uh, I want to learn the byte curve, okay? And I would like to create a small debugger where you see on the left uh, the source code, the Python source code, and on the right the byte code. Okay, I would like to create that. Uh, here's my example. Oh, yeah, come on. Okay, is the last version of Python, the version of today. If you print hello, there is just hello. There is a missing, there is a feature in Python and you don't know. Okay. If you want to see the bytecode of CPython, this feature is in the source code of Python since two or three years. It's not new, okay? If you define ltrace, you will get the bytecode and the value of the argument, okay? So, uh, what's the next point? Mm, yeah, I know, two minutes. Uh, where's my, sorry, my mouse? Yeah, that's all. <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you very much, Stefan. Welcome. Um, can I just say, it's absolutely wonderful to know that someone can go from not being a contributor to going to a conference and becoming one. So three years ago, Stefan could not have given that talk, and now he really is an actual contributor to Python. Anyone can do it. Not that I'm saying that mm -hmm. Stefan isn't a wonderful person, <laughs> but it makes it real, you know. So uh, is there a quick question before we move on to the next talk? Go on. One question. You can have the honor of being the person that asks that question. It will make you special. Let's do it. Yes. Uh, is the documentation available in different languages and is help needed in those translations? I'm sorry? The documentation, is it available in different languages, like in French, in Italian, Spanish, or is it <laughs> only in English? No, the documentation is just in, uh, in English, of course, because that is France. But I know that in France, there is a, the, a group, the FP, they try to, uh, to translate in French. No, if you want, you can download the, the, the documentation, of course, it's just a clone of the repository, try to translate it. And in the last version of, uh, last, since two or three years, uh, you have a feature in things where you can uh, translate, you can create uh, a French or Italian part of the documentation. Okay? All okay. right, thank you. Uh, join me in thanking Stefan once again. Thank you very much. <laughs>